Hello all on the VC and uh, welcome to another update. Uh, I'm going to try and make this uh, a bit short because um, it's a little bit late um, but um, I'm going to showcase uh, VLCLT which I got from the VC's very own Ben Costello and I'm also going to showcase some um, pickups which I've made recently. Uh, so starting off um, with uh, with the Hall of Records which I got from Ben, uh, which he, um, uh, I'm sure everybody will be familiar now with Ben Costello as uh, he's put up some some excellent um, uh, VC updates recently covering um, his extremely eclectic um, vinyl uh, collection. Um, you know, he's, um, he's very kindly um, sent me quite a lot of um, uh, records um, since I uh, first started communicating with him and uh, he sent me a haul here during the week which um, is a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I'll start off with um, a band which Ben himself is very much uh, a fan of uh, that is Japan and this is a 7 inch uh, single by them. Uh, I second that emotion and um, on the B-side Halloween and uh, Japan, of course, this is a classic um, early 80s synth pop. Uh, the sleeve is a bit tatty, but the, um, but the disc itself uh, plays pretty well. Uh, so, and there we go. Is, uh, yeah, so David, Sylvian, and Japan. Uh, that is, uh, thanks for that, Ben. That was, um, I appreciate that. Um, uh, Part two of his um, uh, of the VCLT, which he sent me, was a record which he uh, I think he got this quite some time back. But he's been he been meaning meaning to um, to give it to me to me for quite a while. But it is a uh, uh, Penthouse and Pavement by um, Heaven Seventeen and uh, another uh, early eighties uh, synth pop classic. Uh, as you'll know, Heaven Seventeen. Um, uh, so it was um, uh, Martin Martin Ware was this, um, Martin Ware, Ian Craig, and uh, Glenn Gregory. So um, they broke away from the Human League and um, formed Heaven Seventeen. And uh, this is their debut album, dating from nineteen eighty one. And uh, it's got this very distinctive sleeve, um, which is kind of uh, almost kind of. Um, you know, kind of a pastiche of the kind of emerging yuppie culture, I suppose you could say. You know, it's like this kind of corporate, almost like based on a kind of corporate advertisement where they're all in suits and there's this kind of logo here, a new partnership that's opening doors all over the world and, and so forth. And uh, it's got some classic um, tunes on it. Uh, we don't need this fascist groove thing. Uh, the title track, Pentos and Pavement. Uh, so, um, the disc itself is as well in um, really nice condition. And uh, just given a spin there uh, just about 15 minutes or so ago, and it, is, and it really, really plays very well. So, um, there we go. So, um, nice one, Ben. Uh, thanks very much for us. Um, now, um, Ben gave me another couple of records as well, which were, um, which he picked up, um, uh, I think, he was telling me where he got them now, it's a place in Dublin, I think, but uh, it included this uh, compilation uh, album by Magazine, uh, a band that I'm very much into, it's, um, it's called After the Fact. Now, Ben did say to me that the disc itself is in really quite poor condition and uh, he wasn't wrong so um, um, it is pretty scratched all right um, I'm not sure if yeah if I might want to actually uh, risk playing it but um, but uh, I do like the sleeve. It's got a really interesting cover uh, there. If you can see that, it's kind of an kind of an unusual image. I think it's a. I think it might 
might possibly be the image of a, of a palm of a, of a hand. It is this kind of like mirrored, kind of mirrored image. But anyway, uh, so that's um, this magazine. Um, anyway. uh, now the next three records, he did tell me that he kind of picked them at random and he um, like th these two um, Kelvin singles are by the level of us. You know, uh, ben did tell me that he taught, he kind of misread the, the name and he taught that uh, it was the Breeders, um, you know, the band from the 90s that um, Kim Deal of Pixies was in. Uh, the Levelers, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't sure if when he told me at first um, who they were, but I, no, I actually might, I, I do remember them now kind of vaguely. They were kind of um, folk rock. I'm not sure if they're still around or not, but they're kind of a, like folk rock, cr kind of crusty, anarchist kind of, um, kind of political group. Um, now this is a, this is called World Freak Show. Uh, it's from 1991, and um, this is called um, this is called this garden from two years later, 1993. So, um, also I wasn't expecting this, uh, the Christians. Um, I kind of, I kind of, they're a band I kind of forgotten about. Um, I remember that single that they had back in the eighties, uh, "Harvest for the World." Uh, this is called um, "Ideal World" extended remix version. So um, there we go. So um, so that was um, uh, that was Ben's. Um, excuse me, I'll just adjust the uh, camera. Uh, so that was Ben's VCLT everybody and um, I really appreciate it. Um, it was worth it alone for the, um, the Heaven 17 and uh, oh, you know, um, Penthouse and Pavement and the um, and the um, and the single by Japan. Now I'll show you as well a couple of um, pickups that I've uh, that I've made recently. Um, first off this is an album which I bought from uh, Renier, who I've, um, I've picked up a lot of albums from him in the past. He runs a stall in the, um, the Mother Jones Flea Market here in Cork. And this is a classic. This is, um, I'm sure this needs no introduction, uh, The Mothers of Invention, Weas Weasels Ripped My Flesh, and a very famous uh, cover there. Uh, now this is a French pressing uh, from 1970. Um, could be a second pressing, I think. Uh, just bear with me. Just kind of going a bit out of focus. So um, um, I haven't actually yet had uh, the chance to play it. But um, uh, it really looks in excellent condition. Uh, so it's on reprise, as you can see there. And uh, yeah, the disc looks um, disc looks really nice. Looks um, really clean. Uh, okay. Now. This also in the Mother Jones um, flea market. Um, uh, this is um, this is Love uh, or to Lee, and uh, this is their debut album um, uh, Da Capo. Now this is not a first pressing. Uh, it is a early seventies reissue, maybe from about nineteen seventy one or thereabouts. On Electra, on the um, uh, I'll show it to you there now. It's on the Butterfly label. Uh, there we 
go. Let's go back to this thing, the butterfly label, uh, the kind of the early reissues on the Electra label. And uh, this is a fantastic album. This is really, I really love like this album. Um, uh, love, or you know, one of those seminal uh, psychedelic bands from the, you know, from that uh, 66, 67 kind of summer of love period. Um, very influential. Um, Arthur Lee himself, uh, I think, yeah, he died about maybe five years ago. Um, but um, yeah, brilliant album. Um, uh, the sleeve, uh, there's a little bit of um, damp or something on the corner, but uh, otherwise it's fine. And the um, the disc itself, the vinyl, actually is in really really good condition and it plays re plays really well. Um, now something. Uh, something rather unusual here now. Well, unusual in that um, this is a group that I haven't that, that I haven't yet featured on the VC. Uh, in fact, that, that I've never owned on vinyl before. But uh, this is um, something which does not need any introduction, I suppose. Uh, well, I'll introduce it anyway. It is, uh, it is the White Album by the Beatles, the Bad Four, and this is a Yugoslavian pressing uh, from the late seventies, um, which I picked up. I didn't pick it up in I didn't pick it up in Mother Jones, I picked it up um then you'll know the place. It's the skateboard shop. Uh, so it, it's a skateboard shop which also sells vinyl and I've picked up a few things there in the past. But uh, this so this is a Yugoslavian pressing, late seventies. Um, it comes with um, uh, these four prints. Uh, four photo prints of the Fab Four, as you can see. Um, now, uh, these are probably, uh, you know, worth more than the, than the record itself in terms of, you know, kind of collectability. Because, uh, as you know, as far as I know, there's probably no difference between these and the and the um, prints that appeared in the original pressing. So, um, um, the vinyl itself is kind of, in, well, it's probably in good condition, like, but, um, there, there's quite a few scratches, but it plays okay. It plays fine. Um, funnily enough, this, this, the White Album was the only Beatles album which I ever bought. I had it actually on cassette years ago, um, back in my student days. So, um, I suppose I don't really need to kind of go into the, I mean, I'm sure everybody here is already pretty well familiar with it. Um, so, um, but um, I suppose it's not every day you see Yugoslavian pressing. It's kind of, it's on a, it's on a label called um, Jugoton, if you can see it there. So, it's a, something a bit unusual. Now, um, next up is a group which I featured in my last, in quite a few of my recent videos. Um, it is uh, Throbbing Gristle, and uh, this is another kind of a little unusual, uh, well, it's, it's, it's um, kind of a collector's item, again, from this group who were, you know, they, they were renowned for their kind of... Um, Releasing kind of you know limited edition vinyl and kind of um, but this um, this is a single called um, Subhuman uh, Subhuman and on the B side um, something came over me and it comes in it was released in 1980 on Industrial Records and it came in this uh, this camouflage uh, plastic bag as you can see here. Now, Trob and Gristle at the time were going through a bit of a, a bit of a phase where, we, where they were becoming kind of obsessed with um, kind of all things military and kind of dressing up in military gear and, and so forth. And, and this kind of reflected this. There's a couple of other singles that they released that had these kind of um, plastic app, um, camouflage bags. Uh, now this is, um, as you know, the 
opens the uh, the sleeve. Um, subhuman now, a bit of a bit of controversial. Um, uh, it's kind of the song itself. It's kind of whenever we interpret it, I suppose it's kind of told kind of from the perspective of a kind of um, I suppose it could be from the perspective of a kind of a concentration camp guard or it's kind of difficult to interpret it really but it's it's probably you know it's you know probably and Gristle are a very controversial act and um, it's really for you know um, their exploration of um, themes that are pursued on, on songs like this that really you know that, that um, I've earned them that reputation. And the B-side, uh, Something Came Over Me, is a song basically about wanking. Uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much, you know, about the joys of wanking, masturbation. Uh, so, um, uh, it's also got the image of a caravan this on, on the front there. I'm not 100% sure what that's all about. Um, anyway, uh, now, the single itself, um, uh, this is quite interesting because it actually um, glows red under a light and um, uh, like I've never, I've looked it up on the internet and there's no mention of this, um, this release being released in um, translucent red rival. Um, I'll try to show you. And, um, bear with me. If you can, yeah, you can just probably make it out there now. Uh, it comes across kind of purplish, but um, there you go. So um, it's, uh, it's an interesting um, item, kind of um, certainly, but you know, a collector's item, I think. And uh, one that a lot of um, Throne and Gristle fans would like to get their hands on, I think. So, there we go, that's it. And um, I hope you've enjoyed watching. And uh, I've certainly enjoyed um, uh, pulling this up. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Talk to you next time.